Camera speed. Sound production. Take one. Action! Welcome to the End of the Fangirls podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Lexi, and we're two girls with a slight obsession of everything pop culture, and we can't seem to stop talking about it. Oh my god, no kidding. We've been at this for like three hours. Oh my god, yes. So Welcome to part two. Yeah. We're going to be talking about our movies and TV shows. Originally, we were going to do two parts, but then we talked forever. A lot. A lot. It was a good year. It was a really good year. It was a very good year. I watched almost 200 movies this year. So. I don't even know where to start with these. Ow. I feel like there are some that should be on here but disappointed me and therefore are not. A.K.A. Halloween Kills. You should have been on here, but we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you and you let me down. Um... Start with Almost Famous because, like I said, with Penny, like, the character from it, this movie just, like, really spoke to me on a level. It was before I had any writing jobs. Um, Yeah, I think, actually, I had, I stopped writing for Jay back in, like, November. Oh, my God, Jay. Right? Man gave me my first job. Like, ooh. We love him. Um, but so then I was like in between I was like applying to writing jobs and everything and like watching this movie. Like it was about this like teenage kid who has like a passion for writing and then gets to this huge opportunity to follow a rock band on tour and write about it and all that. And so like it really spoke to me on that level. And just like I'm a big music nerd too, so it just was like a perfect movie in my eyes and for me so that was a special one um i haven't watched it since i watched it for the first time and that was back in january i believe so it's been a minute it has been a minute but that one's always going to be like one that just like gives feels like a warm hug and i really loved it I think you might like it, too, if you ever catch yourself feeling like you want to watch it. Was it? So there's actually an almost famous musical on Broadway right now. I have heard um, about that. Yeah, it's closing. Um, Ah. I heard it's very good, though. Okay. (laughs) Um, So don't really know why it's closing, but I've heard that from, like, my friend's parents, (laughs) not, like, critics. Ah. So who knows? Excuse me, I just burped a little. Um, what is my first one? Oh, my first one is Do Revenge. Cause oh my god, yeah, yeah, that was this year. Jesus. Um, not gonna touch on it too much, just because we have a it, million. Yeah, we have one, and we have a million. Oh, two, we, we also an entire covered episode. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um oh my god i forget everything we covered yeah but do revenge just felt like an early 2000s movie it was i loved it it was perfect um it also i didn't get the plot twist which i always if i don't get the plot twist in a movie i love it even though usually i don't really try to figure out the like mystery plot twist of the movie but um i thought this one was really good and it was maya and cami slayed so my heart and also the questions things after of that movie. movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was the theme this year. Questioning yourself. Yeah. How many women can make Sam question her sexuality? A the lot. Answer was a lot. Oh, was that it? <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah, it was really good. <laughs> I'll also talk a little about this one because I kind of touched on it earlier, but Hereditary rewatched it this year and just like felt like in love with it. Because I watched it like I think the year after it came out and like I liked it, but like I didn't fully understand it. I wasn't big into horror at that point. Like I liked horror, but I wasn't like 
a diehard fan like I am now Mm -hmm. and I wasn't as desensitized to to horror so like I was terrified now like I'm still scared by it obviously but like I can appreciate it more and I can like seek out the little easter eggs now and I love showing it to people and like watching their reactions to it because it's one of those movies that like is just batshit insane so you never know what's gonna happen and I really like showing it to people but I love that movie it's like a perfect near perfect movie to me and one of the best porn movies in my opinion. Yeah. Love. We did talk about that a bit when we did our watching movies from genres we don't like. So. Yeah, we did. Um, My next movie is Wild Things. Oh my god. So, that was this year. Um, <laughs> This episode is so fun, but it's like making me realize just how much I don't remember. Right? So I watched Wild Things when I was going through my first net phase. Yep. I'm so glad I did. Um, I really I was didn't really know what the movie was about, but I was really just watching I it for now. It. It's so good. It's one of those like plot twisty movies, like every time you think it's all figured out, like it takes a turn. Um and then Nevin and Denise Richards kiss. So like how can you not love it? Um I'm not going to spoil too much in case you do want to watch it, but I do highly recommend watching it. Neff's haircut's not the best, though. She gives me, um, not her hairstyle, but her, no, not her character in the craft, because isn't her character in the craft really quiet? Yeah. Okay, the main girl, then. Oh. But, like, a little more low-key than that. Okay. That's the vibe I got from her. Interesting. Still love her though. Oh yeah, obviously. Um, I think this is. I still love Winona it. despite the really shitty haircut she's had sometimes. That's fair. That's fair. Once again, anything two thousands era, if even before that when she had her really short hair. I I just don't think I like short hair. Like, that's fair it's just has to be styled very well and i don't think people style it well. no i feel like a lot of people cut their hair and then just don't style it because like it's simple yeah but like i feel like it needs to be styled or sometimes it just looks odd just like it's just like men i think men need to style their hair and a lot of them don't yes i'm like i don't care that you have short hair and you're a guy you have to style it otherwise it looks weird exactly <laughs> um my next movie I feel like I've talked a lot about it this year. I definitely talked about it in our um, scavenger hunt, but The Virgin Suicides, yeah. one of my new like all-time favorite movies. Um, I'm currently I reading the book. It happens. It. You do. I'm still currently reading it from summer, but I have a real problem with reading outside of summer for some reason. <laughs> um, it is one of the most visually stunning movies i've ever seen just like it's the cinematography on it is gorgeous i love it um the story is so good the casting is really good i i just need to rewatch it it's a masterpiece in my opinion and i feel like if you haven't watched and you've thought about watching it go watch it it's a 10 out of 10 and don't let the title deter you because, like, it sounds like it's going to be, like, some kind of, like, erotica. It's not. It's, like, a really good, like, coming-of-age drama, I guess. It's really good, though. My next one, which I feel like is shocking that it took me this long to watch, um, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, my God. That made your top. Yeah, I'm it was so good. It's very oh my god, good. I feel like we should be reading our reviews for these as well. Why aren't we? Uh, where is Silence of the Lambs? What was my other one before this? Wild Things. Did I write a review for Wild Things? My yeah. version Suicides one is sometimes you watch a film that as soon as it's over, you have no words. You're only left with the feeling that you just witnessed something incredible. This is that movie. I don't quite have the words to describe just how beautiful yet haunting it is, just that I can't believe it's taken me this long to finally watch it. 
And that stands true. <laughs> I feel like I can't read one for wild things. <laughs> oh my god. It literally just says, Nev Campbell kisses a woman, and if that doesn't sell you, go get yourself checked. <laughs> my one for almost famous is I want to be Penny Lane when I grow up. What's my one for do revenge? Oh, <laughs> my one for do revenge is funny, I think. I just assume that whenever there are two powerful female leads in a movie, they're going to kiss, and I have to stop having that mentality. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, um, Did I write one for Science of Lambs? Let's see. Did you watch it for Scavenger? No, I watched it just because. Oh. oh. I remember why I watched it. I remember the day I watched this too, because I went to go see Billie Eilish after. <laughs> um, It wow, was, dang. yeah, it was the anniversary of the coming out. And I was like, you know what? Let me just put it on while I get ready. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm surprised it took me so long to watch. I think you don't really gravitate towards horror though and i think you said you were like scared that it would yeah be but it's not horror it's thriller it is it has its horror elements but it's not like, yeah it's, it's a good beginner horror but like I also you got to be older because like, it's, it's horror it's, it's like i really think it's just a thriller yeah um but hannibal's creepy Yeah, no, he is a thousand percent. Um, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt one second because I forgot to tell you this. Did you know that Anthony Hopkins is the narrator of The Grinch? No, you really scare me. That did you know Anthony Hopkins died? No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no I, didn't, I was watching the live action you're... Grinch, and it said narrated by Anthony Hopkins, and I'm like, hold on, maybe I didn't know that. I did not know this. I think it's like, and then when you I've listen to before. it, just certain words he says, you're like, "Oh my god, it is Anthony." It is him. Yeah. Sorry, I just I had to say that. No, I've been meaning to tell good. you that for like two weeks now. Yeah. No, I feel like I've seen that, and it's never fully. It just doesn't registered. make any sense, and I think that's why it throws me so hard. Yeah. That's fine. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, my review for Silence of the Lambs is generally don't know why it took me so long to watch this movie because it's like 99% of the books I read. Yes, I do know this movie is based off a book. (laughs) Jodie Foster was excellent in this movie and it's refreshing to see a female lead in a role that is typically portrayed by by a male in films. If Clarice was written as a male lead, the movie absolutely would not have worked and it's nice to see that throughout this movie. Anthony Hopkins' portrayal of Dr. Hannibal Lecter was bone chilling but had me on the edge of the seat wanting more from him. I love the use of the camera during the one-on-one conversations, putting you in the other's point of view and feel like you are the one having the conversation with them. Hmm. Did this win the best picture? I think so. Okay, and Jody definitely. Jody won. She best had actor. to. I don't know, yeah, okay. but she had to. She killed this. She did. It's so good. Um, I watched Hannibal another. this year. Don't watch it. I went out. Yeah, no, it's not good. I'm still scarred from that. Is there a TV show based off of it, too? Yes. Okay. I feel like I've heard the TV shows better. I don't know. I should watch it. Maybe we will. <laughs> um, Another one I'm not going to talk too much about because we did a whole episode on it was X. But I think when it comes to new releases, this might be my number one of the year. I loved it. Really? Yeah. I loved this movie. Um, I saw it twice in theaters because no one else would go see it with me again after. Um, my, I have a really long review for it the first time. So I guess just kind of like watch the podcast episode, but like. Oh my God, right. <laughs> yeah. But I just basically said like, it's like a slow burn horror. It. I don't know. It was just it. Oh my god! Amazing cinematography. That is one of the, my favorite parts about it. It had beautiful cinematography. Um, the soundtrack was amazing. Casting was top notch, and it was like scary, but not like terrifying. But like enough to like keep me on the edge. And I just, I think it's one of the best of the year, and I think it's one of the best horror movies I've seen. And it did also I'm... feature your um 
not fetish what's the word <laughs> eyeball <Gosh>. eyeball trauma <laughs> eyeball trauma is my number one thing in horror movies i hate it <laughs> just in anything in general i also watched all of us are dead this year and i had to look away every single time there was some kind of eyeball thing because for some reason they really liked eyeballs in that movie in that show just i can't do eyeball stuff it's nasty eyeballs fingernails and toenails just get it away from me i don't know why it makes me squeam i hate it it's so gross and there was i didn't need that i didn't need it it was a good kill though <laughs> it was a very good kill i just didn't need it the second you start putting your eyes up next to a little tiny hole you're gonna get your eye poked out so at least i knew it was coming but very i did true. not expect for like the smash cut to like the yeah. pull out of it Blech. yeah nasty but brutal oh i did say my last bit of this was all in all this feels like a classic film to me and one that will have people talking for a while it's a nice resurgence to the slasher genre as well and something that was desperately needed and desired and i'm eager to see it again i do feel like i do feel like it actually kicked off a new era of slashers which i'm really excited to go it did yeah but watch the episode to hear actual thoughts on it my <laughs> my next one it's a movie called in and out i should have known this was gonna be on here <laughs> okay. i loved this movie yeah you did and i hadn't there's no right to love this movie this much but it's just one of those ones the movie has an overall rating of a 3.2. That's not- pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, I read the movie a four and a half. <laughs> I just read, read my review. I, so I, I No, this, this is my favorite review you've given. Really? I love it. It cracks me up. It's, it's great. Because um, you can just see the pure joy you had while writing it. <laughs> <laughs> while writing it? <laughs> It's just truly wild. It, yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't, it's about a movie of this. I don't even know. <laughs> Tom Selleck is in it. It's the most. Didn't you say it's like a homophobic, but also the gayest movie? <laughs> it is. I was. I watched this. For when we were going to do a rom-com bracket. And oh for some God. reason I watched this one. Don't bring up the rom-com bracket. I can't talk about that. We're, we'll eventually do it. We'll do it. People actually give us rom-coms. Yeah. With more coms when they're wrong. <laughs> okay. Anyway. My review for in and out I didn't want to rate this movie this high, but I just couldn't rate it any lower. I had the lowest expectations going into this movie, and it is somehow one of the worst movies I've seen, but also one of the greatest. From Kevin Klein giving us the greatest dance scene in cinematic history, to some of the funniest lines that I will now be quoting every day, to making the Dead Poets Society, Oh Captain, My Captain, seen a run for its money. This is definitely a movie you have to watch with an open mind, because it's definitely outdated given the subject matter, but you can't deny that this movie is genuinely funny. I'm surprised so she didn't make it on your list of actors. Who? Is it Joan Cusack? Joan Cusack is on it. Yes. Yeah. I feel like you went through a little mini thing with her this year. Really? I don't know. I feel like you did. Joan Cusack just pops in everything, though. She yeah, that's true. Helen. She, yeah, Joan Cusack just is in everything. Just exists. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to just do read this one review that I liked. And if this doesn't sell anyone on the movie, I don't know what will. <laughs> so many standout moments from this gem. Kevin Klein punching his friend in the face at his bachelor party because he said Barbara was too old to play Gentil. <laughs> Kevin Klein dressing up as a lumberjack and dancing around his house while a self-help tape screams at him to stop being a pussy. <laughs> when the old ladies were doing their confessions and one of them confess- confessed that she didn't like Bridges of Madison County. Joan Cusack in a wedding dress stumbling out of a bar and screaming, is everybody gay, just before getting hit by a car. (laughs) An entire graduating class and their family standing up and saying, I'm gay in support of Kevin Klein. I do want to watch this sometime. You you just gotta watch it. (laughs) Yeah. It's one of those ones you gotta see to believe. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> Enough about that one. Um, this next one is not a surprise. Um, I watched this movie so many times this year for no reason. It's Freaky Friday. I went through such a phase. I I watched it on a whim one day because I'm just like, oh, I haven't seen this in a while. And I was going through my little Jamie Lee Curtis thing. This might have been what kicked off my Jamie Lee Curtis thing, honestly. I think it was. I think it was. Um, But yeah, I watched it like constantly. And um, I'm just going to read you every review that I've given it because I think they're funny. And I think I'm funny. So... <laughs> um when what was my okay my first one i really do believe all of my problems would be solved if jamie lee curtis was my therapist that was january 14th so this is how we kicked off the year my folks i relate to chad michael murray in this movie because i too would fall in love with jamie lee curtis and sing baby one more time with her in a coffee shop i'm going through a freaky friday phase just look away Lindsay lohan plays a middle-aged mom so well she should have won an oscar and finally, Oda sing Baby One More Time in a Coffee Shop with Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> Can you tell what my favorite scene is? Also, this is a movie that should not make me cry, but does every single time. I don't understand why. Because it's, it's, a, it's it hits, the but... scene where they're about to switch back. Yeah. And it's Lindsay in Jamie's body, and she's like, and he was a really great dad, and I just lose it. Oh my god amazing movie like i don't even care that it's sort of outdated it has a bit of issues it's an amazing movie it's 10 out of 10 it's perfect i don't want to hear a single word about it it's one of my all-time favorite movies and i will watch it i watched it for my birthday this year just to really celebrate the right I way can't. give us a sequel loki <laughs> huh give us oh, a sequel no, give us a sequel high key jamie and Lindsay are on board i want it i know I want Lindsay playing a grandma. A grandma? Oh, okay. yeah, because Jamie. she would I be. It. I got it. I need it. It's yeah. They, you can make this. I know they made this movie. I think they made it with Jodie Foster. Or Back was she the, the day, Parent yeah. Trap? I think she was no, Freaky Friday. She, she was Freaky Friday. Um, I know they made it with Jodie Foster, and I love Jodie Foster, but like you could not have made a better rendition of this movie without Jamie no. and Lindsay. They just made it. They did. They did. Anyway, this is your sign to go rewatch Friday, Freaky Friday because you're gonna forget how amazing it was. Also, the song is a bop. It is. It is. They're on streaming services. Okay. Okay. This one, I. I wasn't expecting to put on it, but I've been thinking about it recently. So I was like, okay, if I'm thinking about it now, I feel like I have to put it on it. Um, it's as good as it gets. I also oh. watched this for our rom com um bracket. And I even when I watched this, I really liked it. I gave it four stars. I was not expecting it to like it. I think it's also a very controversial movie. I don't Didn't remember you know why. Right? Yeah, no, it did. It was nominated for Oscars. Jeez. Jack Nicholson might have won the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Go off, Jack. It's, for, and for a rom-com, it's kind of wild. Like, all, like, the average review is a 3.5, and all the top reviews are, like, two stars. <laughs> so it's fine. But I, I don't know why I enjoyed this movie. I think I was also just going through a Helen Hunt phase. Oh my god, I could have edited her. I love Helen Hunt. Yeah, I just forgot how much she slayed. <laughs> um, and her character in this movie was so good. She just yells at Jack Nicholson all the time, and it's like amazing. Um, but my review for this movie it literally i start this off clearly this is when i was very fairly, fairly new to letterbox because i started off by saying i suck at writing reviews so this is all over the place <laughs> well last you i'm sorry to anybody watching this i'm catching a cold <laughs> yeah a cold <laughs> um we okay. think so, Bruce says, I really thought I wasn't going to like this movie and I wanted to hate it, but I just couldn't. On one hand, I can see why I was nominated for so many Oscars. And on the other hand, I... oh, I did a typo. I can't. 
I would rather see so many people in a rom-com other than Jack Nicholson, and it was hesitant to see him in a rom-com, but no one else could have played Melvin as well as he did. Melvin angered me at times, but also pulled at my heartstrings just the perfect amount for me to feel for him and want him to become a better person. Jack's dynamic with Helen Hunt is what really sealed the deal for me. The enemies to lovers trope gets me every time, and they delivered it better than... I ever could have imagined i'm a sucker for milfs that aren't afraid to speak their mind and helen's portrayal of carol just fueled the fire that fire for me also let's not forget about greg kenner keeners i forgot kenner, how you put I it. Think. thank you portrayal as simon who had my heart melting the entire time and just wanted to give him the biggest hug this movie brought out every emotion inside of me which i was never expecting to happen but i loved every second of it also wait my favorite review is where is it i really wanted this to be about jack nicholson becoming a better person because of a little dog that's what you think it's gonna be about it really it is um yeah it's just one of those rom-coms where yeah jack nicholson a rom-com just doesn't feel like it should go together like i watched what's the other her his name what, what is rom-com but that wasn't it that was no that's Mel Gibson yeah um something's gotta give ah which is his Dike and Keaton rom-com yes that one was not as good but um yeah if you just ever want to see Jack Monkles in a rom-com I recommend as good as it gets (laughs) wild but it's pretty good um, I'm going to cheat and do two right now just because I'm going to talk about Jurassic Dominion, but we've talked about that so much and we just talked yeah. about it last episode that I feel like I don't have much else to say yes. other than I'm really sad the trilogy is over. I love Ellie Sattler. I'm glad we finally got our Alan and Ellie kiss. I appreciate this so much more on a second, not even a second watch, after your brother explained it to us and how it links back to the original um but yeah excellent uh movie i enjoyed it i bumped it up to four stars um but i won't talk much about it because like i said we talked about it last episode and i feel like it broke my heart. we also covered it in a very lengthy review yes. um but i will talk about another one that i watched with you while i was with you that same week mermaids <laughs> so good so this was at like the the height of my Winona phase. Like I was new. Yeah. And so yes. I ran I don't even we I don't know how we got onto it. I mentioned that I wanted to watch Mermaids at some point. And then you're like, we it's really just, good. And then you just we randomly just put it on one movie. day. Yeah, you just yeah. randomly <laughs> put it on the one day. Um, because you're a share fan who isn't, of course. Yes. And I'm a Winona fan and it was perfect. Um, and it's not at all what I expected and I I really thought Cher was a mermaid um she wasn't and I was very disappointed but it was very funny I it's like so such a weird little movie it's perfect it's perfect like it just it's so weird but it is it's perfect and um Cher really said body in that movie she yes. looks snatched. Mm-hmm. Um, little Christina Ritchie is my spirit animal. She's adorable. When she runs around with the pumpkin on her head is my favorite. Oh my god. Um, the ending scene is saved in my camera roll because I watch it just when I need to feel something. Um, also, I'm going to read some of my favorite reviews. Because <laughs> the only re- review I had is just inject the end scene into my veins. I beg of you, it's pure serotonin. Um... But one review says Gilmore Girls on Crack, which, yes, all movies should include Winona Ryder's internal monologue. Little sister Katie chugged that wine. Sis is a tank. (laughs) Cher was only in the mermaid costume for like a minute. I was robbed. Cher, Winona Ryder, and Christina Ritchie as a family. The coven is complete. Cher said, I'm never growing old. And she kept that promise. And when is it my turn to be slapped by Cher? The reviews for this movie are amazing. Just like if you want a like nice laugh, just read those. They're very funny. Such a good movie. Alexi also gave it a review. She just said Cher said body yadi 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 yadi. It did. I don't remember the first time I watched this movie. I think I just no, happened either. to catch it on like television when I was younger. Mm. And 
I had to buy it off. I, like I had to buy the movie off of Amazon, like on DVD, because I can't find it in stores anywhere either. That's and it's not on anything. Yeah, no, this movie's too good. It's very good. I highly recommend it. This was before I was ever like a real share stan when I first watched that movie. Damn. Too good. Too good. It. It's a good comfort movie. It is. My next movie is American Psycho. Ooh. Another one I need to watch. Yes, you do. I'm surprised I haven't. Same. And I need you to watch it so I can share my favorite review on Letterboxd ever. It is the most in one of the most in-depth and like reviews that make you really want to think about the movie. And I love it. Um, I'm not gonna read it because it spoils a lot and it's ah. lengthy, but um it's truly is a masterpiece. Um I was a little hesitant. Also, the cast is kind of wild. Um, I didn't know Jared Leto was in this movie. <laughs> That's strange. I also didn't know Reese Witherspoon was in this movie. Yeah. Mila Kunis well, is in the sequel. There's a sequel? Yeah. Apparently it's not good. Well, I never... Oh, yeah. I don't... I can imagine. Um, Willem Dafoe. It's, it's a wild cast. It truly is. Um, it's just, it's like, it's kind of aesthetically pleasing. I don't know. <laughs> That's weird to say. No, I um, get it though. It's, it's really good. Um, my review for this is kind of funny. It's not serious. It says killing colleagues, strangers, lovers. Okay. Making an anti-Semitic joke. Absolutely not. <laughs> and like it's this movie really fucks with your head too because i've i don't even know if what i watched was real um yeah i i recommend watching it though <laughs> i think i just figured out another movie that's gonna be on your list yeah 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 okay <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah um okay i'm gonna talk about reality bites because like i said i think this movie changed my life um I will because I don't ever know how to because it's really just one of those movies that like it's kind of like how what's that movie called Fast Times at Richmond High like how it, it doesn't have a plot it's just kind of vibes but at least this one does have a plot more but it is just kind of like watching these people kind of like live their lives in a way but okay it has more of a plot um, but it okay. says a small circle of friends suffering from post collegiate blues must confront the hard truth about life, love, and the pursuit of gainful of gainful employment as they struggle to map out survival guides for the future. The Gen X quartet soon becomes to realize that reality isn't all it's cracked up to be. You read that and you don't expect to just like get punched in the gut. <laughs> yeah, but no. like I feel like just like where I'm at in my life right now, it just hits on a different level. So I start my review off. I gave it five stars, obviously. It got an immediate heart. It got added to my favorites on Letterboxd. Um, so I start with a quote, and it makes me sob from Mr. Ethan Hawke. And he said, or sorry, it's from both Winona and Ethan, but Ethan's the last one for Crackles. But Winona says something like, I really thought I was going to be something by the age of 23. And Ethan's like, honey, all you have to be by the age of 23 is yourself. Lose it. I'm done for. Um, and I said, if someone said that to me, I think I would cry. Honestly, this movie feels like a giant hug to me. It was made for me and every other 20-something out there with their head in the clouds. Yes, it's a cheesy 90s rom-com. Yes, it may have a predictable ending, but do I care? No. This is the movie I needed right now, being around the age that these characters are. I relate to Lelena. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life either, babe. And I felt a sense of peace after watching, a sense that things will work out themselves out, and maybe that's cheesy, but listen, I'm in my feels now. Blame the movie. I am obsessed with it and I think it's a perfect movie and it just feels like a hug oh I do have another one that I gave a review just because okay maybe I should have added them to my ships Winona's character and Ethan's character are like best friends but like he's kind of a slacker he's definitely in love with her but she ends up picking up with Ben Stiller who's like more 
responsible and is like a big time businessman. It's really, yeah, it's wild. Okay. Um, but Ethan asked her, he's like, where are you going? And she's like, to look for you because he ran away. And it's such a good movie. I, it has everything. It has love. It has comedy, has so many quotable lines. Amazing. 10 out of 10. And Winona's hair is not scary. So you could watch it. I thought her hair was short. It is, but it's not like scary short. Okay. It's like probably like to here. Like, yeah. Okay. Like above shoulders, but still. She okay. also said there's Janine Garofalo in the movie too, who plays her best friend. And at one point they did a panel a few years ago. And Winona says, she's like, I always thought that our characters would end up together. I'm like, so you're telling me, L- me Lelena is sapphic? Okay. Okay. I'd love to see it. Oh my no, god, I, Sam, it really is you. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah. my god. No, I think you should watch this movie. It's really good. No, I think I need to. I feel like we have a lot of these conversations. I feel like it would we speak do. to you as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My next one is The Birdcage, which I think yes. I raved about this movie multiple oh, times. Absolutely. Um, Robin Williams, Nathan Lane were both snubbed of Emmy, I mean, Oscar nominations. Amazing. Like, I just, I didn't know what I was expecting when I watched this movie. And I, the only reason why this movie was on my scavenger hunt is because it was for the category of one of the top 10 grossing movies from the year you were born. And I watched the majority of the other ones. And I was like, all right, Robin Williams, like, I can't go wrong. And I no. like, literally could not go wrong with this movie. Um, My review for this movie says, I think it literally says about Nathan Lane being, no- yeah, Nathan Lane not being nominated for an Oscar for his performance as homophobic. <laughs> I love it. And the other um review that I liked it says, God, I wish I had Robin Williams, Nathan Lane, and Christine Bransky as parents, but instead I have clinical depression. Uh, I was wondering, I'm like, I know there's someone else in this. It was Christine. Yeah. Excellent so casting. Good. So good. This is another movie I've been wanting to rewatch. It's just... It's camping. Mm-hmm. What else can I say? I don't it I'm trying to remember if it was sad or not it like is but it, it didn't make me sob it kind of just kind of okay. hit you in the heart a little bit like a little melancholy a little bittersweet yeah yeah exactly um loved it though 10 out of 10 okay. they should make more movies like this <laughs> should make a lot more movies that they used to for reals um when did we say we were going to do our rom-com bracket? February. January, February. Okay. I'm just looking for the review for my one next movie. Uh, there it is. Okay. My next movie is I Could Never Be Your Woman. And this was one of the ones when we were looking for rom-coms for our bracket. I just stumbled across this one on Prime and I'm like, okay, it has Michelle Pfeiffer and Paul Rudd as the leads. How can I go wrong? It has a 2.7 rating. Like, mm, the reviews are not that good. Like, a lot of threes and lower. I mean, the first two are three and a half. But it's... I am stunned by how much I loved this movie. I gave it four stars. Um, It's, I don't even know what it's like. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like such a fever dream. I watched it at like midnight. Um, A movie follows a mother who falls for a younger man while her daughter falls in love for the first time. Mother nature messes with their fates. I don't fully remember what that part was, but it was kind of weird. Um, But I give it kind of a lengthy review, I guess. Not entirely, but I'm going to read it anyway because I need to sell everybody on this movie. It's just like one of those ones you got to give a try and it was worth every second. So I start with, I will defend this rating. Don't try me. I wasn't expecting anything extraordinary from this movie besides a decently entertaining background watch. Instead, I found myself intently watching the entire thing and laughing out loud. 
The casting is so good from Michelle Pfeiffer, Paul Rudd, Saoirse Ronan, John Lovitz, Stacey Dash, and even Henry Winkler, aka The Fonz. The humor was kind of campy, but it worked so well for me, and to make me laugh out loud in the first seven minutes of your movie is a pretty big deal. The TV set setting is, yeah, because it all takes place on a TV set. Like, she works on a TV set. It doesn't all take place there, but it's really cool. The TV set setting is a really fun idea, and every clearly adult character playing a teenager is a very clever nudge at every high school show. Also, all the pop culture references. I'm a total nerd for pop culture and nostalgia, so watching this now when the references are dated is really entertaining. Definitely has its issues, and it shows its age and era at times, but all in all, it was a really enjoyable movie to me, and one I would recommend if you're in the mood for a silly rom-com. Oh, and extra honorary points for Michelle Pfeiffer's hair in this. I definitely have seen, like, the poster of this movie before you yeah. even watched it, but, like... It's a 2007 movie, and it's only 97 minutes. Like, it's, like, a short little thing. But it's... Oh, my God. You know what? It other... was really surprisingly well done. I didn't put this on my list, but now you're making me think of the other Michelle Pfeiffer rom com I watch, um, One Fine Day. That's also with George on my Clooney. list. That was it was cute. It was really good. Yeah, it's, it's still on my list. I definitely recommend watching it. Also, what's the um There's like a little girl in it, and I didn't realize how much stuff she was in she was younger, but she Oh. Is it called Good Girls? What was that show? That everyone was obsessed with. Yeah, I think it was Good Girls. Okay. Not the, it's the short one. Okay. Yeah. May Whitman? Yeah, sure. That sounds right. She's in that. She's like George Clooney's child. Oh my God. She's also in a movie with Sandra Bullock. Um, and she plays Sandra's kid. Yeah. Stop. Okay. I didn't realize she was a child actor too. Yeah. But like honestly, good for her. Is she a Nepo yeah. baby? I don't think so. Good for her. But she was also in, like, that show Parenthood. Like, she played Lauren Graham's daughter. Like, she did some good stuff. Wait, I'm going to look this up now, making sure she's not an Apple baby. Because that's honestly extremely impressive. Right? She was in the Duff. Yes. Um... She was an Independence Day. Yeah, she played the... Oh my god, yes! She played the president's daughter. Oh my god. Her mom was a voice actress. So I guess she could be considered a Nepo baby, but not like... Her dad was a set construction coordinator. Maybe she had a bit of a foot in the door. Maybe. Okay. Still, though, very impressive. She was actually very cute as a kid. She, adorable. I don't know what she looks like in One Fine Day, but in Hope Floats, she has these little, like, bottle glasses, and it's really stinking cute. Let me see if I can put a picture of her One Fine Day, because it's actually the cutest thing ever. This is why it takes us so long. We we get distracted. You can't really tell from the photo. Oh my god. No, she's so cute. She's adorable. She's adorable. I need to watch that movie. You do. Okay. On to the next movie. <laughs> yes, we get sidetracked. Um, okay. My next one is Kramer versus Kramer. Ah. Uh, this movie had no right being this sad. No. And also so aggravating. I can't look at French toast the same way. We had French no, toast that's for Christmas breakfast, and I'm like, <laughs> my review says, "Who knew that I could start sobbing uncontrollably while me- watching a father and son make French toast?" And the other review I liked said, it's "Yeah, I will never be able to eat French toast again without crying." Is mine? Yeah, no, absolutely not. It was <laughs> just the change. <laughs> um. The one review that I like says, it's weird how both of these characters aren't that likable, but I felt sympathy for both of them. Yeah. Also, who knew you can hate a Meryl, Meryl, a Street, Meryl character? Street character? A Meryl Street character, right? It's they also movie... played me so much that I thought she Thinking was going to be in this movie be in more. Yeah. But no, she's the parent that left. Mm-hmm. It's not a movie I particularly want to rewatch again. Just because it's like I, kind I of a know. tough watch. Yeah. It's very it slow as on, well. 
Yeah, no, if it was on. Maybe I watch it. But, like, I'm really glad I watched it. Yeah. It, was this, no, this was an Oscar winner. What did we watch No, Dustin Hoffman won an Oscar. No, I mean, what did we watch this for, category-wise? Um, National Single Parent Day for Divorced. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did put this on here for that reason, because we wanted yes, to watch Kramer vs. Kramer. It's also why what, we did we road did. tripping movies, so we could put When Harry Met Sally, but that isn't on here for a good reason. No, I watched When Harry Met Sally before that. No, we... D- I, I watched a different movie. You watched When Harry Met Sally. What did I watched, you watch for road tripping? I think Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad I... Yeah, when Harry Met Sally is not a good movie. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, But yeah, I feel like everyone should watch Kramer vs. Yeah. Kramer. Especially, like... A lot of the con- the reviews are about having divorced parents, and like they're like, it yeah, hits neither home. Of us but like, do, I love it. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. It's definitely a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, my next one is one I want you to watch. I'm excited for you to watch eventually because I know you will. Um, Thelma and Louise. Oh yes. This is a movie I have wanted to watch for years and just never did and it's never been on anything so I've never been able to. I found it on DVD at a thrift store one time and so I picked it up and then I still didn't watch it so when we had this scavenger hunt I'm like okay this is my chance. Um, I'll just read my review. So I gave it four stars which I went back and forth on what I was going to give it because I... In my review, I say, I'll admit this movie did lose me a couple times. There were some scenes I felt could have been cut and some things I just didn't care for. But then that final hour the movie came along and I couldn't peel my eyes away. In just over two hours, Susan and Gina developed such deep, raw, emotional characters who you can't help but grow attached to. No one else could have played Thelma and Louise better and they are the perfect fit and their chemistry is absolutely beautiful to see and watch develop. You can just tell that a lifelong friendship was made between the two while filming this. And then there's the final shot. You know it's coming. It's iconic at this point and hard to ignore. But when it finally comes, you're left with full body chills and the knowledge that you just witnessed such a spectacular adventure and story of true friendship. I had my moments with it when I'm like, okay, like maybe like let's pick it up. Yeah. But then like it sucks you in. And I think maybe it's just like a little long winded at the beginning. It's a 130 minutes long. So I think so that's over like two, two hours. Two hours and ten minutes. Yeah. So like it's a bit of a long one. And I think like still things could have been cut out. But also like once you finish it, you're like, okay, no, like you need this full ride to witness like the friendship and everything that they grow. And it's yeah. Also, it's made by Ridley Scott. And I thought maybe just like I don't like I didn't like Alien. He also did Hannibal. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just not a big Ridley Scott fan. Yeah. So I think that might be part of it, but um, it's an amazing movie. And Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis are national treasures. They but are. We knew that. They are. Um, I was going to say something. I also like didn't know what this movie was about <laughs> until either. you watched it. And I was like, oh, okay. I just knew it was about two women on the run. Yeah. wild yeah i'm excited Uh, for you to watch that someday me too okay my next one's a little controversial but it needs to be on here american beauty it was almost on mine but i figured it would be on yours so i'm like i'll just pitch in it was it was i like how much crossover we had in the movie section because yeah then i can leave some out yes um all my reviews i can't read any of my liked reviews because they're all like essays yeah but i'll read my review it says <laughs> this film makes me want to write a psychoanalyst of the symbolism of the white pick offense how the ideal perfect family is far from being attainable and all the other symbolism and metaphors in this film in this essay i will and then of course i never wrote an essay because <laughs> that's too much effort but I'm not, like, big on, like, you definitely appreciate movies more, and, like, I recognize the symbolism and metaphors and all that, but this movie, like, really, like, hit that for me. Yeah. I was like, 
wow, this is like beautifully done. Amazing. You know, when Harry Styles says it's a movie that feels like a real movie, that's what this is. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It's, it really is perfect. I also, it's wild, the storyline, especially in recent things that have come up. Yeah. Um, but I can, I can recognize that this movie is very good and, um, I'm shocked it took us as long as it did to watch it. I'm not. Okay. A little sidetracked. I was talking to Macy yesterday about watching things at, you were meaning to watch things earlier in life, but that you watch it now and you look back on it and you're like, no, I watched this at the right point in my life. Yeah, I no, that's definitely how I did it as much. I feel like I was reading one review of mine that I watched something and I'm like, I'm glad. It- oh, it was Little Women. How I said okay. I never had any interest in watching them. I still mm-hmm. don't care to watch any of the rest of them. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm almost glad I waited as long as I do. I did because I can relate more to what's going on. I understand more what's going on and I see myself and everybody. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of it kind of sucks sometimes when you're like wow I can't believe I've gone this long without seeing this yeah but then like you can I think this is a movie that if we had have watched it years ago it wouldn't have hit the same no because like it's a lot to take in it is I don't think my little naive brain would have been able to appreciate it (laughs) um but as an adult now I can definitely appreciate it more I'm glad I waited to watch it I also just didn't really care for it I think when I was a kid I like obviously I heard a lot of things about it but I was like I always just knew the poster yeah I know it because of what's the hour there's a song of Ariana Grande and Mac Miller and he has a verse saying American Beauty I'm gonna go find it now (sighs) that movie was incredible it's the way ah i can't remember who watched that first was it me or you you watched it and then i immediately watched it right after right oh come on oh it says come watch a movie with me american beauty or bruce almighty that's grooving (laughs) Mm. so i knew it from that (laughs) okay um but yeah, no, this, and it's also the cin- cinematography. This was when we were going through a cinematography phase. <laughs> it was. We went through a cinematography phase. Yes. Every single time we finished something, we're like, wow, the cinematography was beautiful. Amazing. Also, just bright colors really pulled me in. And of course, mm-hmm. like, I feel like the it was movie very bright. Screams red. <laughs> yeah. Also, Annette Benning. <laughs> oh, absolutely. She killed Peter snaps it. all around. Um, my next one, a lot of these are coming from the scavenger hunt, um, but Little Miss Sunshine, again, this was with my Tony Collette era. Yeah. Um, I guess this is one that, like, I'm glad I watched now than when I would have, oh, okay, actually, I said that in my review. <laughs> so, my favorite quote that's, like, stuck with me since it was, you do what you love and fuck the rest um and so I have that as like the beginning I love putting quotes at the beginning of my reviews I feel so fancy um but I say I feel like I just went through every emotion possible and when the credits rolled I felt just an overwhelming sense of sadness hope and joy it really is such a great movie and I can't believe I had never seen it before today but on the other hand I'm glad I waited this long because now I'm at a point where I can relate to it where I understand it and I think that just elevated the viewing experience because yeah I had only ever seen the beauty pageant part Oh, yeah. This movie is sad. You know, it is. I I first watched this when I was younger, and I recognized the sad parts, but I haven't watched it in a few years. Like, yeah. obviously, like, the grandpa just croaking in the back seat. Um, my heart. The brother finding out he's colorblind. Oh, my God. Um, Such a, like... It, yeah. It's a lot. I also didn't realize I was Tony Collette until this year. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, definitely as an adult, it definitely would hit different. Yeah, it's an amazing movie, though. Yes, I I can recognize that a Tony Collette movie is good. Yes. 
Um, my my next one is Basic Instinct. I, I did, but I don't. That was not in English. I don't remember where we talked about this recently, but I feel like we did talk. I about know. This I feel like we talked about it too. Oh, in our um, guessing our movie, the movie from movie right. Reviews, you maybe. got Basic Instinct. Yes. Um. Once again, I don't know why it took me so long to watch this movie. It is literally up my alley. It is. Um, obviously, I knew the scene about the Sharon Stone. Everybody never really came. Yeah. Um, my review literally says, I think every mystery thriller film should have the this vibe plus an insanely hot woman playing bisexual. And then the one review I liked says, if I get killed by sexy bisexual Sharon Stone, that is on me. Do not prosecute her. prosecute her because she caught me slipping. Absolutely. Yes. Um, my family and I also got in a heated debate I remember after this, this movie. I was like, no, she did it. Did I say she did it or didn't she? I don't think I think you said she didn't do it. And they're like, no, like she didn't. You're like, she no, did. she didn't. Yeah. I probably that's probably right. Cause I, I no bisexual woman would do any harm. No sexy milk would. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I will say Michael Douglas, they couldn't cast any other man in this role. He's so scary. He is. We for a year of Catherine Zeta Jones, we do talk about Michael D- Douglas a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having flashbacks. No, you're good. <laughs> I put them there. You can have nightmares. Um. So, my next one. If we're talking about movies that changed my life, I want to talk about one that kind of ruined my life. Um, Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> I'm so confused what this movie is about. Oh, okay. I'll 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 explain it. Okay, never mind. They're not going to tell me on Letterboxd. They're not going to give me a big enough uh, okay. explanation. But basically, it's this little suburbia town, and there's, like, a scientist who lives up in a castle mansion, like, far up on the hill. And he's in the middle of making a human experiment person from scratch. And he doesn't have arms for him yet, so he gives him scissor hand things just so he has arms. But then he ends up dying before he can put his arms on. So then one day, Winona's mom in the movie, uh, I forget her name, uh, Diane West. Diane Weist, sorry. So uh, she is one of those, like, Avon ladies who, like, sells makeup. (laughs) So she ends up going to the castle to sell makeup and meets Edward. And then she realizes, like, what he is and that he's, like, helpless and everything and takes him home with her. And he ends up, like, just, like, living in the suburbia town. Everybody loves him. He, like, trims everybody's hedges, does free haircuts, like, all this. And he's, like, just, like, this super sweet guy. And then it takes a turn and becomes the saddest movie I have ever seen in my entire life. Even the music just, like, breaks me. And I meant to rewatch it for Christmas because it's a Christmas movie. I'm convinced. And I never got around to it because, like, I know it'll break my soul again. That sounds wild. Um, so yeah. Um the quote. So I guess it's not really a spoiler. Like it's not anything big, and I don't know if you care to watch this or not. Um, but it like it's Winona's character telling her granddaughter the story about him. And so at the very end it flips back and his her granddaughter's like, Did you ever see him ever see him again? And she's like no, I wanted him to remember me young. Because he ends up getting chased away by the townspeople because they think he's bad. And Winona's character had fallen in love with him, like, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. But so then she never sees him again. But then she says, I <sighs> hate this movie. She's like, you see, before he came down here, it never snowed. And afterwards it did. Sometimes you can still catch me dancing in it. And the reason it's snowing is because Edward is making ice sculptures constantly. And they're all of her, like, dancing in the snow that they had one time. And it it gets me so good. You'd have to watch the entire movie to understand why it, like, just breaks me. 
Okay. I can't even explain it. Like, it doesn't sound sad, but just, like, in the context of everything, because he, like, genuinely yeah. was a sweet person, and then just some woman, he rejected her advances, and she ma- said, like, oh, he tried to kill me, he tried to hurt me, all because he didn't want to have sex with her. And so, like, she ruins his reputation, all this, and he didn't do anything wrong. And it's Aww. really sad, and... um. Yeah, I say I haven't been this affected by a movie in a long time, but I'm in full-blown tears here. It's such a visually stunning movie. The aesthetic of the brightly colored neighborhood juxtaposed by the dark, gloomy mansion Edward lives in is a beautiful metaphor for the film as a whole. It's so sweet and quirky and has genuine laughs in it, and then it all just goes so wrong so quick, and it's heartbreaking. That final shot of Edward chipping away at the ice sculptor, showing that he made one of Kim, and that's the reason for the snow, then showing her dancing in it. It's just so beautiful, and it made my tear ducts overflow. I just wish I had given it a chance sooner, and perhaps that's what I'm taking away from this movie. This is one that is going to stick with me for a while. And it did. It's one of my, like, all-time favorites now, but it's one I can't really watch again. Because it upset me. Yeah. Sorry, that was very long but I just really had to talk about it. So I don't think I've talked about it on here. Oh, good. Hmm? um no it's fine <laughs> um i have one more i feel like i could fit it in quickly i know i have two more but i can fit them in really quick i think okay um my last one is shutter island i also watched this for the first time this year you did yeah i don't remember that i watched it back in like january okay um this movie fucked me up sorry february i watched this and then i watched inception the day after not a good double feature no your brain will i've never seen inception but oh you should watch inception i know i need to um as someone who has crazy dreams watch inception this movie fucked with my head so much i my review literally says i don't know what what is real and what is imaginary anymore is the is the life I've been living the past 25 years a lie? Am I even real? Mine is, I'm so confused, and yet I completely understand, but also I don't know if I do, but also I do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I had also the one funny review that I liked. Ben Kingsley saying, baby, why are you wet to Leonardo DiCaprio? Literally gave me whiplash. <laughs> A great movie. Wild. Um, But... This is, I watched, I think, two Christopher Nolan films this year. This one was better than Memento, even though Memento, I think, has um a bigger name around it. Oh, no, I lied. This is Martin Scorsese. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> Ignore um, that last comment. Oh, is- that's why I watched this. Oh, for or, Scorsese and Leo. I mean, yeah. No, who'd you say? Christopher Nolan? I think he did Inception. He did Inception. That's why yeah. it was in my head. Um, Shutter Island is literally the perfect movie for me. Because <laughs> it fucked with my head so much. It's literally it's like every single book I read. But to visually see it, and it's also so visually stunning. Um, I, my jaw was on the floor. I started watching this before I went to work and I had to finish it at work because I couldn't oh just leave like that. Jeez. <laughs> um, it's crazy. It was so good. I don't think I could ever watch it again though. No, but it was so I'm good. glad I don't I didn't glad I didn't know anything about it going in. Yeah, me either. Wild. Crazy. Um, I have two more that I'm technically like four more, but like one's a trilogy, but I can bump them out really quick i just have to mention them yeah um so the before trilogy again watch this because we met ethan hawk um, oh right okay <laughs> so these movies basically just follow him and this woman and they're the only two characters in the movie except for like maybe side characters they run into okay so um i know you're not big on love stories i am this is like one of the most romantic love stories i've ever seen so before sunrise came out in 1995 and so i say this is truly one of the most beautiful love stories i've ever witnessed on film and now i'm terrified to watch the sequels because it was so perfect then before sunrise i mean before sunset came out in 2004 nine years later i liked this one so much more um so this one 
they were supposed to meet up after the end of the last one. And this tells us nine years later, they never actually met up. But they meet up here because he's like wrote this whole book about his time with her. And so she comes to his thing and they decide to like walk around before he catches his plane. He has to catch a midnight plane. And so, um, but so then he like just keeps like biding time to like spend more time with her. And she, at the very end, she's like, he takes her, she takes him to his apartment, her apartment. And she's like, baby, you're going to miss that plane. And he's like, I know. And so like he did all this thing so he could miss the plane to stay with her even longer. Oh. Um, and then the last one came out in 2013. So nine years later again. And this one takes place in Greece. So right up my alley. Did yeah. not like this one as much. But this one like takes them. They're married. They have kids now. And like just shows like all like the troubles of marriage and like all the stuff that happens in that and like kind of falling out of love with each other but like still having that familiarity um mm-hmm. and then it just says will you be able to put up with me for another 56 years i'm looking forward to it they just have a really cute love story and i really Aww. like it um this one did put me through more of an emotional turmoil because i didn't think they were going to make it out okay they did but this one also takes away like the other two were just basically just them this one has more people in it which i didn't really love okay um, but and it also felt more cinematic where the other two felt like you were just following them around. Um, and then my last one was Corpse Bride, which I won't talk too much about. But like when I watched it, it just like was on my mind constantly for like a month. Um, because I went through like a big Tim Burton thing this year. I just really love his style and his aesthetic and everything. I think he's incredible at making movies. Um but he makes me cry a lot so this one was just really really beautiful just in Mm -hmm. general like the visuals were very very pretty like it takes like when they're because it's like obviously corpse bride so she's dead but like in the living world everything's gray and blue and black and white and then when you go to the underworld everything's just like an explosion of color so it's like really cool um but the quote again i put quotes and everything She's like, I was a bride. My dreams were taken from me, but now I've stolen that from someone else. I love you, Victor, but you are not mine. I cried. Damn. Tim Burton makes very upsetting movies. I swear. He does. Um, but he then does. she like turns into like a bunch of butterflies at the very end and like flies away into the sky because she can finally live peaceful. And it's really sad. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know how it's a family movie. No. But that was my last one. <laughs> um, yeah. That was a lot of movies. I had a lot of really good watches this year. We did both, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So our TV shows. Do you yes. want to kick off the TV shows? Sure. Okay. Um, I guess you will kind of agree with this. Yellow Jackets. Ah, uh, so good. Is this on your list too? Of course. Okay. I was going to say, Um, I always forget that you watched it this year too. Because I literally watched it not even a week into the new year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot it was this year. <laughs> I know. Amazing, show stopping, never been done before. <laughs> I mean, has it been done? Yeah. yeah probably. It's not this basically good. no. If you took Lost, Lord of the Flies, and The Wilds and put it into one show, this is it. Yeah. But it's, I think what makes the show more interesting is putting the future in it as yeah. well. Because you get both um, perspectives. Or the present, past, whatever you want to look The only thing I don't like about that is that you are spoiled by who's making it out. It's so not, I feel like it takes well, away the no, stakes. No. This fucking account is spoiling that shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> because... I didn't want to know if Fan was alive yet. I wanted to be surprised yeah. by that. Because genuinely, like, just thought... Jackie, not Jackie, Shauna, Natalie, Misty, and Paisa. Thank you. Um, I thought they were the only ones who made it out. Yeah. And so then it was a shock that Lottie made it out. And then to add Van into the mist and yeah. just like randomly say it, like, I feel like I wanted to be surprised for that. So did I. It's okay. Um, it doesn't take away, but like, no. it just takes a bit of an air of mystery away from it, I guess. No, it definitely does. Because now I'm like, did everyone make it out of there? <laughs> yeah. Well, not Jackie, but who knows? Maybe. Yeah, who else I was surprised by? That girl who just blew up in the plane. 
Oh my god, stop. Like, you knew it was coming as soon as she got in that plane. Yeah. But, like, it just blew me away. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're gonna start eating people this season. Thank god. Thank god. (laughs) Which isn't something you should be excited about, but I've been waiting for it. When they start eating each other is when they're gonna start winning a war. Because they're gonna (laughs) eat Jackie. I didn't really think about that, but I think they're gonna eat Jackie. (laughs) Ooh, okay. And I feel like that's why Shauna has so much guilt about it. Yeah, I can see that. Goddamn. Also, Shauna's pregnant. Does she have a kid in? Okay, I thought adult Shauna. We're talking. No, does she have? She does have a kid. Yeah, it's the girl from um, Stonewall Prep. Yes, right. So that is her kid from that, correct? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I oh, hold on. I'm gonna go do some math. Okay. Um, but thought, we, we I'm will just be really intrigued when they started like teasing that she might be pregnant. I'm like, oh my gosh, please be pregnant because I just feel like that adds such a big she twist give to it. An abortion, correct? She tried to, I think. She did trap too. Okay, ninety six, and I'm assuming it two thousand and one. Ninety six, two thousand six, two thousand. No, because her oh kid boy. would be the age in twenty in the twenties. The her kid would be my age. Oh boy. Okay. Oh my god! They do they eat the baby? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> It w- I wouldn't even be surprised. Me either. So, Thaisa ate the baby. Didn't she eat the dog? Oh my god, I cannot wait for Thaisa's storyline. Right. It's gonna be so freaking There's good. There's so much that's gonna happen. Also, Misty. Oh my god, Miss Pearl is insane. Crazy bitch. Love that I crazy love bitch. Love her. Nat got kidnapped and taken to Lottie? Fucking Lottie, man. That girl is crazy. I'm so I don't know excited. who's crazier. Is it Misty or is it Lottie? Honestly, probably Lottie. <laughs> probably. I'm Which so excited. I can't wait to I can't wait to rewatch. Yeah, no, we are rewatching. We will do a season one recap. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? We also might do a maybe a trailer um review. Ooh, considering that'd be fun. Our Wednesday trailer review has a lot of views. It did maybe. really well. <laughs> yeah, maybe people like that. Maybe. Um and of course, we're doing a season two Yellow Jackets review. Of course, it sucks that it's I, we can't binge it because it's weekly. But oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I got spoiled because but... I watched it late, so I got to binge it. Yeah. So that's luckily for me. I'm really bad at watching shows when they come out, so I might be able to binge it. You just have to keep away from spoilers. Yeah, actually, I feel like this is a show, like, I'm going to want to binge every yeah, week. Definitely. Okay. Um, what's my next? Oh, my next show? Okay, so two shows literally took up my entire year. The first one being ER, because I started it the end of 2021, and I finished it August of this year. August. Jeez. Literally, like, a full year of watching ER. Which, so I originally watched the show for Juliana, and then I was like, okay, when, like, the main doctors leave, I stop watching. And then I got freaking attached to all of them. Mm. See, Grace and didn't I have attachment stop. characters when they were new. I hated all of them. Because it, what happened was they bought, some of these new characters were on when the old, the the um, mm. original doctors were on. So, like, you start to grow to like them as well gotcha so by the time that like the old the old ones left and the new ones came in you're like god i can't stop watching yeah um i will say the later seasons were not as good but um i grew an attachment to all of them and i had to keep watching so if i didn't have to i enjoyed watching at one point i was like i want to be done with this show because it was so long yeah how much um, was it for I would say something along those lines. Okay. 14, 15. I think it might have been 15. Maybe. It was quite emotional. 
Um, but yeah, no, I did enjoy ER. I never really thought I could enjoy a medical drama. But the stupid doctor is like counting had me in a chokehold. Yeah. Medical Love them. Too, yeah. yeah, also so many traumatic episodes. Mm. Why well, must... If you ever want to read something on disaster episodes, go read Sam's article. Do it. <laughs> Because let me tell you, disaster episodes truly are some of the best episodes. They really they're are. the most painful. They're so beautifully done. They really are. Um, I feel like I've talked so much Stranger Things, I'm almost burnt out on it. Um, Stranger Things, obviously, is my top show of the year. It took over my life. I found new comfort characters. I found a comfort actress um it really is worth the hype whether you want to believe it or not whether ha- no matter how different you want to be it's stranger things is worth the hype you yeah. can't really deny that you can hate it all you want but it is a very good show and it is. um i'm very excited for season five i'm very excited for season five go back you to the like last part and you can hear and everything half. else i had to talk about with it yes yeah don't want to wait the year and a half though but whatever i know okay um the other show that has taken over this year svu um i i blame macy for this yeah yeah i'm i'm allowed to blame her oh absolutely <laughs> um, it's her fault we love you macy but yes genuinely though this was the show that I was talking to Macy about where I felt like if I watched the show any earlier, I don't think I would have appreciated it as much Mm -hmm. going, like finding myself going through some life experiences. (laughs) The show's a little too relatable at times, which is not good. (laughs) Um, But I feel like that's almost comforting, like having a character like Olivia after. It is. That kind of stuff. Um, She's my baby. And I don't know why I decided to watch the show because I just complained that ER is 15 seasons and SVU is currently on 24. It's okay. I really want to rewatch Grey's Anatomy. But you will stop after a certain season. I will. The problem is- I'll try to push through. It won't happen. Yeah. The problem is, is like, Olivia's not leaving. Yeah. (laughs) Like, ever. (laughs) So, like, I have to watch to the end because, like, Remember when we did our comfort episode and we were like hating Macy on <laughs> finding comfort in the show? Because yeah. we're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I get it now. Yeah. I'm sorry, Macy. Um, but I think I also said Grey's Anatomy was one of mine. So like, I can't really okay. judge. Fair, fair. I think mine were all comedy. I don't even think it's so much the show, the it's the characters. Yeah. yeah. And always like, they always are heavy, but I think there's always, like, the little moments that are humorous that kind of mm-hmm. make up a bit yes. of comfort. Definitely. Um, can't we... You're going to hear us view a lot, because when we do our most anticipated, it's yeah. going to be in there. We're, when we do our raft next year, it's going to be in there. Yes, it will. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't believe I started a show that has 24 freaking seasons, though. But, well, I'm on season 13. And I started three and a half months ago. Do I have a life? I do. (laughs) To be fair, I'm very impressed. I'm on season 13 after getting a full-time job. So. That's true. I want to rewatch Grace just to see how long it takes me to get to season 11. Because I think that's where I'll quit. I'm good on um, SVU. Okay. Um... I also have in just like that on here and I went back and forth about taking it off but I feel like it was just really nice to have these characters back that I couldn't take it off in good conscience Mm -hmm. also I just really miss Stanford slash Willie don't even talk about it um so I miss him and while and just like that isn't great and it's sorely missing samantha 
Yes. I just really love Sex in the City and just having those characters back is comforting. Yeah, no, it is. really nice. Um, my next one is A League of Their Own. Mm. I touched on this a little bit before because I really didn't think I was going to like the show, but then everything started flooding my timeline off. I didn't think I would like it, it either. And it wasn't like, it, there, it's not on my favorites because it, it's yeah. not my kind of show. I'm not into sports, but mm-hmm. it really surprised me. Yeah, it, it surprised me too, <laughs> especially for someone that loves the movie, like having a sequel done or a TV show done felt wrong because why would you mess with the classic but like mm-hmm. we said before, in our previous episode um plugging that so it gets the views <laughs> yeah it felt very different it did from the movie it had its easter eggs to connect it but it was very different and um i forgot who the little is it may who's the little old lady i forget I forgot her name too, but um, she said that this was more of a better uh, depiction of what the All-American Women's League was like, and I'm glad that she at 96 she finally had it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible that she's 96 and came out as a lesbian. Good for her! Good for her. <laughs> this was the year of people just coming out. Sam, oh. you have two days left! <laughs> <Susan> Sarandon. <laughs> oh, yes. Best celebrity Wild. reveal ever wild that was a wild one that was not expected and she's like she's like well i'm gay i'm like susan i no, i'm bi oh yeah she's like i'm bi so like what i love her queen now get with gina davis i dare you for real um my next one which we've touched on and if you really want to hear thoughts go back to last year's wrapped ted lasso yes so I watched this because I was hanging out with somebody. They just put it on. They're like, I think you'll like this show. Let's just watch it. Give the first episode a try. And they're like, do you want to keep going? I'm like, why haven't you already hit and play yet? Like, yes, we're continuing. And I just immediately texted Alexi and Izzy. And I'm like, guess what I'm watching? No, I tweeted. I think I tweeted something. Maybe. S- something happened. And one of you messaged and were like, Sam, are you watching Ted Lasso? Yeah, and I think so. Yeah. So that started a big thing um it everything that you hear about the show is completely true yeah just even if like because I don't like sports I know nothing about sports I could not care any less and I adore this show and I just find myself very invested in it and I love it with every fiber of my being and it's, it's more than a sports show. It's yeah. It's not even a sports show at this point. It's like a no. show about found family, and it's really sweet. Yeah, it is. It's also a great um show to cry to that you don't expect to cry to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's one of the best episodes ever. It's Christmas episode. Classic. Amazing. Yeah, ten out of ten perfect. show. Um, yes. We did a whole Ted Lasso episode with Izzy. We did. Go back and watch that. It was a lot of fun. When uh, Jason Sudeikis finally drops season three, we will be reviewing yes, it. Yes, you will be back. My next show is one I literally just started watching because it was all over my TikTok for you page because Renee Rapp is just everywhere. Um, Sex Lives of College Girls is probably one of the funniest shows I've ever watched. <laughs> um, I was not expecting to like it, especially because I was a Renee Rapp auntie forever. Yeah. I apologize for that. Okay. Um, You've seen the light now. I have. I have. Um, I, I still, still haven't, get, but you have. I still get very much um, entitled theater kid mm-hmm. from her, but I can get past that because I love Layton, love Kim. Kimberly is so funny. It's also wild that that's Timothy Chalamet's sister um yeah weird but it's actually really good it did get picked up for season three but people are holding their breasts because hbo max has been canceling a lot of stuff oh, even after they yeah. said they've been picking stuff up so we'll see what happens 
but I really do enjoy it, even though the season two uh, finale can get the fuck out because it sucked. Um, but yeah, if, I feel like you'll like it. It's super funny. Okay. My friend, uh, my friend, she asked for my HBO Max account the other day, and I went on my account, and she started watching it, and I asked her what she thought of it, and she's like, "It's so freaking funny." I was like, "Yes, exactly, nice. exactly." Sorry, I was just checking to make sure I actually did watch the show in 2022. <laughs> no, you're good. <coughs> Modern Family. Oh my god. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I watched it in January. Uh, finished it in March. I just checked. So that's why it feels like I didn't watch it this year. Because No way. Year. Yeah. January no 13th, way. it says I watched it. God damn it. Oh, right? And sanity, man. For real. Um, I actually just recently rewatched up to seven or eight, I think. Because after that, it kind of gets like, like I watched it all the way through the first time, obviously. Okay. And it isn't, it doesn't get bad. It's just like everyone's grown up at that point. Everyone's kind of like moving out their lives and you're like wrapping up a show, a sitcom. And that's always not like the most entertaining. Mm-hmm. It still has its moments. This is one of those shows. I feel like I've said it a lot. This episode just feels like a warm hug. Like yeah. these characters are so much fun. And I have my moments where I don't, sorry, where I don't like all of them. But at the end of the day, I think I just, like, there's no one I hate. Like, there are ones mm-hmm. I like less than others, but at the end of the day, I think they're all great characters. And I think this is honestly one of the best sitcoms out there. And it's just very comforting. It's the epitome of a comfort show. And I just love it. I can't believe it's been a year. I want to rewatch it again, even though I literally just yeah, did. Accidentally, too, but yeah, I accidentally rewatch a lot of things, which is a problem. I just put it on one time because I was like eating and I just wanted something to watch during and then I just kept putting it on before bed and always happens always happens always um no I love that show I'm really like I okay so I tried to watch it years ago or not years Mm -hmm. ago like a couple years ago because everybody was talking about it and how much they love it on the timeline and then I didn't want to watch it because I didn't like the shakiness of the cam because it's all like a documentary style and I, I couldn't get past that you, you get over it. Like, after, like, the first couple episodes, you get over it. It's not even there anymore. So, I, yeah. I need to just give things a better chance. Because I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very funny, too. It's so funny. And there are it's episodes a- and scenes that just, like, are very comforting and, like, a favorite video to me. Yeah, I've um, gone over my friend's house a few times and she was watching it as a background show and it's a great background it, show it's really funny it is it's a great background show great casting too yes all across the board uh-huh <sighs> um speaking of great sitcoms um abbott elementary is my next one i watched this because i needed a buffer in between er and svu because i was going from one drama to another and i was like yeah, i just need like a quick little comedy to watch and i love abbott elementary it's so funny it's um it's like modern family the documentary style um but it's like real real world stuff about like underprivileged schools um and stuff like that but the characters are so relatable and they're so funny and just like bizarre (laughs) um yes it does Yes, it does. And her work wife, Miss Um Barbara Howard, Shirley Ralph, well deserved Emmy win. Yes. She's her comedic timing is amazing. Just from clips oh I've seen, yeah. Um, I definitely think you should watch it. It's just like a good quick little I'll watch. Get around to it. <laughs> yeah, I know you will. I've had so uh, much. I know. But yeah, no. I I need more comedies in my life, so this one is a great one (laughs) um gosh what else is next 
Oh, okay. This one is a big one. I'm Chucky. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I watched this because I think they asked for pitches around Chucky and it was getting closer mm-hmm. to Halloween. I'm like, why don't I like watch this? Season two is coming out. I want to be able to be prepared for this. I loved it. And I've never really been big into Chucky. Like mm-hmm. now I am actually. But I was never really big into it. Chucky was terrified me as a kid. Um okay. so like watching this, like I know the Chucky series is like very um what's campy and just not serious. Okay. But the show is very unique, I feel like. Like it takes that campiness, it doesn't like discard any of its past sequels or movies or anything it like actually adds all that in and it just like continues this like decades long franchise which I really liked um but it modernizes it modernizes it enough that it works now and it's actually has its good scares and it like the characters get kind of annoying because they're like preteen age like Uh probably like 13 14 age they're also like one has a drug addiction. I'm like, you are 14. Oh. It's a lot. <laughs> it's just like there's some things that I'm like, okay, this is questionable. But also yeah. I think in any other like I think that age is the perfect sweet spot for a Chucky spinoff. Because any younger and it just doesn't work that well as we've seen in past ones. Like you just blame it on the little kid. But any older and you're just like, okay, it's these kids. Like they're these like little shitty teenagers. But like so like that preteen age is like just enough where they do believe that it's a doll doing this but also like they're old enough that they can get blamed for it it's just really good and also it has a lot of callbacks to the movies and like brings in legacy characters like my personal favorite character kyle she comes back as like a surprise which is really cool they bring back tiffany played by jennifer tilly who i love tiffany um and then i ended up watching a bunch of the chucky movies this year not a bunch of them I watched Bride and I watched Seed. Oh, and right. then I watched the Chucky series. But great show. 10 to 10 recommend if you... Even if you're not like a Chucky fan, it's just a really fun watch. My next one is The White Lotus. Yeah. Specifically season two. Oh, um, absolutely. I, I enjoyed season one. I liked season two better. I liked the characters more. Um, Sorry there's no Connie Britton. Though. You, yes. But Jennifer Coolidge, Emmy, Oscar, every award-worthy performance in the final episode. If you yeah. watched, you know what scene I'm talking about. Um, I love that the moral of this whole season was fuck men. <laughs> Those are the best this, shows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's wild that Ned Schneebly of School of Rock wrote the white lotus that doesn't feel right no it doesn't it doesn't but he did such an amazing job of of it um i'm a little so season three is supposed to focus around religion as and someone who is not a very religious person i'm a little hesitant about it obviously i will watch i know the cast is going to be banging and apparently Connie Burton might be coming back. So even though Jennifer Coolidge will not be. Um, sorry for that spoiler. No, I already <laughs> but know. I know. Um but yeah. I'm curious if anyone's watched The White Lotus, what season you thought was better. I feel like I a lot of people. I see a lot of people season saying two. season two. I saw someone well, looking for recommendations on the timeline today, and someone's like the White Lotus specifically season two. Season two. Yeah. I want to know know if anyone likes season one so if you know anyone that does just let me know just okay. curious just put a tweet out there yeah um my last i was gonna add dead to me but mm-hmm. i omitted it last minute because i you can watch our episode on it figure out why or if you've seen it you know why um so my last one is well and grace because you and izzy have been telling me to watch it for so long and i finally did um I've never watched a show that makes me laugh and makes me so happy while at the same time making me want to bash my head through a wall. Mm-hmm. 
Will and Grace are two of the most infuriating people I have ever encountered on television. Yep. Like, they're horrible. And the more I watch, I'm like, wow, you don't get any better. You know what's, like, funny is I went through a Deborah Messing phase after oh, watching <laughs> Will and really? Grace. Yeah, what was wrong with me? I don't know, apparently a lot. When did you watch this? <laughs> In college. Oh, okay. You, you've seen the error of your ways. Mm-hmm. Um... No hate to Deborah Messing, really. It just your fucking character sucks. But also, I've heard stuff. Yeah, just yeah. for Megan Mullally. Um, no, it's just very just fun and stupid. And I love Jack and Karen specifically. Karen, as I already mentioned last episode, I love all the share references. There's been a few Celine Dion references, which I very much appreciated as well. The celebrity cameos are out of this world. It, That's when you know a show is good, is if you, the celebrity cameos are like... They're getting some good ones now. A-listers. They got yeah. Cher twice. Yeah. Cher. They just got Patty Lapone. Queen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Jack made a wig out of Broadway Legends hair, because of course he did. Yes. Yeah. No, amazing show. I'm really glad I'm watching it. I'm it's great fun. I'm on season seven. And there's nine? Eight. And then the reboot. Reboot. Which I wasn't going to watch, but now I'm kind of tempted to, because I just am not ready to really say goodbye to them yet. It's not that great, but like... Yeah, I'm going to probably give the first seasons. episode a try and we'll see, but... Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um, Sorry. You're good. My last one is Paper Girls. Fucking... Stop canceling shows. I was also gonna put the wilds on here, but um oops. Yeah. Um Paper Girls was so good. It's been a while since I watched and I kind of forgot a lot of it, but I knew it was good in the moment and I needed more. Um you never like get just a female centric show anymore. And it had it was like time traveling, but like it it was wild. It was wild. I'm trying to remember like all that happened, but also I can't process everything that would happen because it yeah. was like mind fucking as Stranger Things was. I do want to watch this still. I do recommend it. I yeah, it's not that long of episode. I know you did recommend it. I can't remember why I didn't watch it though. Because there were so many things I've recommended. <laughs> yeah, I think it was around the time another show came out. You were watching three shows own. at this time. It was a League of Their Own. I, it was a League of Their Own, and I watched that instead. Watch Paper Girls, too. <laughs> I will. Um, I'm so mad it's not getting another season, because I I had a feeling about the plot twist of what was happening, and I needed more of it, and I'm not going to get it. So, thank you, so Amazon. Annoying. Can someone else pick it up? Not Netflix. No. I was thinking more like Paramount or Ooh, Hulu. Okay. One of them. One of them. All right. Maybe I'll give it a watch. Universe. I'll give it a watch. I need okay. to. Okay. I have so many shows I need to watch. Yes. Ugh. So much more to watch. So much. Do you have any more? Uh, no, I don't. But did you want to give a rundown of everything that you watched this year? And now, because I might need another um video in order to do that. <laughs> we can. Would that be TV shows? TV shows. Do you want to do movies too? I can't. Tell you, you have two hundred movies. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. We just watched a lot. Yeah. We don't have to then because I did forty TV shows and here two hundred movies is a lot yeah we can plug our letterbox in our tv times yeah we'll, we'll do, that, do that we'll put them in the in the yes drop down that's probably easiest because i don't think i watched that many tv shows i watched, I watched 40 almost, yeah i watched almost 200 movies yeah i'm trying to find my tv time i think maybe we can post a little like... snippet on twitter as well like, yeah. like what we watched yeah my tv time is my do it as a little teaser tell people guess what we watched what was on our favorites yes 
Yeah. And my teeny tab is my name and my letterbox is my name as well. I'll put them in the I'll put them in the description. Perfect. Make sure you follow us on there because I'm always yes. interested to see what people are I watching. love finding new people on Letterboxd and TV time and I follow everyone back. So same. It's fun, even though I didn't realize fun. how to find TV time notifications, but I figured it oh, out. Oh, they're so confusing. <laughs> um I don't do we know what we're doing next week? Our most anticipated. Oh my god, right. <laughs> right as much. It's been four hours. Yeah. Oh Thanks my god. For coming for the two part special. I'm for sorry, the grand it finale. Two parts, but it had to be. It, it had, had to be. be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on this episode of Enter the Fangirls. You can keep up with us on social media. Our YouTube and Instagram are Enter the Fangirls, and our Twitter is Enter Fangirls. We can't wait for you to join us in the new year. New year. <laughs> Make sure you follow us for our Real Sister podcast. Once again, I'm Lexi. I'm Sam, and this has been Enter the Fangirl.